Uh, so for today, I wanted to have uh, Peter on. Peter has kind of been uh, taking the lead on the development of CEO logging. And uh, I always like to have people who've been contributing to different libraries in the ZO ecosystem on, you know, one to kind of get to get to know them, but also give them a chance to share what they've been doing and kind of help everyone get a better understanding of uh, the libraries that they're working on. So today is going to be all about logging, which I think is one of those things that like, is not always the most exciting thing, but is something that like you, <laughs> you, you, you need to do for whatever your application is. And probably when you're trying to track down a bug, it is very useful. And oftentimes you need to be a particular way to fit in with your own infrastructure or whatever way your company has that they want to do their logging. So it's, uh, it's a very necessary thing. And hopefully, uh, you know, we have libraries that make it very easy for us to do it. So we can just get it kind of the way we want it and we can move on with our lives. Uh, and that is kind of, I think, the aspiration of CO logging here. Um, so uh, what I thought we might do is uh, just kind of uh, work through a little bit of a logging example, and we'll start with kind of how we just add really simple logging, and then we'll kind of build up from there to more uh, complex stuff. Uh, but before we do that, let me give Peter a minute here to introduce himself. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Peter. As I mentioned, I'm maintainer of Zio Logging Project. I think it's around one year, probably now. Uh, so yeah. Also, I'm colleague of Adam. I'm working for Zyverge. So yeah, like uh, one of the colleague. I get to have lots of awesome colleagues. Like other some other guys which were presenting in in these sessions during that sessions. So yeah. Mm. Basically, I uh, I join like uh, in, like uh, to that uh, project like uh, from Zaya version two. Before there was I think different maintainer uh, like uh, uh, and project like was uh, on side of uh, Zaya partially. Uh, in a way that, like, uh, not not sure if, like, uh, you know, but like with Zio two, like uh, Zio three intro introduced like uh, main logging interface directly to Zio core. Before, like, uh, it was just like uh, another additional service, like uh, for Zio version one, which you could add like to your layers or environment. And now main purpose of this project is like uh, additional backend, mainly additional backend integrations and uh, features which are not directly in Zio core itself. Like uh, this is similar in other cases for uh, different parts of Zio, like Zio config, Zio metrics and so on. So uh, main purpose of Zio login project is like add additional integrations with uh, various backends uh, in general. Um, there are like a uh, few ways or few modules in uh, in uh, Zio login itself. Like uh, we have like uh, Custom implementation to not have dependencies if if like if somebody prefer that way, but uh, in general like uh, Scala and Zio uh, is on top of JVM and uh, it's like uh, using still a lot of different JVM libraries. So we have like backends like for SL4J, which is probably most common another logging interface uh, for Java projects. Uh, and like a lot of people using them. So like th those are probably two main main parts or backends like uh, which are present in Zio logging uh, library uh, itself. There is also a way how to like, uh, if somebody prefer like use uh, 
Zio loggers implementation, there is a way how to bridge like SL4, SL4J loggers back to Zio logging, let's say. So depends depends on your use case and your preference. Like you can you can use both approaches, like uh, use SL4J like end point, or like even if there is SL4J something like uh, I don't know if you are using some. Uh, JDBC libraries or some netty like those are probably the most common libraries which are still even in Zio uh, libraries itself use like underlying uh, toolkits. Uh, you you probably like to bridge that or like uh, log those things like us probably. Logging is one of things which where we are looking everybody with something uh, is wrong in general. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, that's that's like main main part of of uh, of this library. Um, we have like uh, we have documentation in general. Like uh, we have some examples, uh, like uh, to show like some use cases, like uh, uh, how to how to do setup or how to make layers and so on. So uh, I'm not sure if you've seen that. It's it's good to check it in general because like I I understand the, the, a lot of developers are rather first try to, to do some code and then like figure out what's happening. <laughs> but sometimes it's good to check it, check, check documentations uh, because a lot of a lot of a lot of problems uh, like uh, is related to that fact that people do, do not check documentation and just probably expect that everything is magically working, but yeah, that's that's the thing. Sometimes you need to read the manual, I would say. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, awesome. Well, um, shall we shall we um, do some do some examples? Do you want to uh, share your screen or shall I? Uh, yeah, I can share the screen. Yeah, yeah awesome. Uh, no problem. Uh, so yeah. I could probably do it sooner. So, yeah, no. like, <laughs> uh, in general, like, uh, I, I hope it's uh, is sharing proper screen. Like, do you see dialoging documentation? Yep. Yep. Okay. I'm saying it. Okay. So, as I mentioned, it's good good to check like uh, documentation. Maybe just quick quick summary. Like, uh, uh, I try to do like documentation in a way that. It's have some main points like uh, navigations and so on. Uh, so, uh, and what is better to use in which case? Like, uh, if you have, we'll have some additional questions. Like for other projects, we have like Discord channel. Please do not hesitate to ask or create create the ticket. D depends what you prefer. If something like. Uh, is wrong or you have some questions in general. Uh, yeah, and otherwise just enjoy. Okay, let, let's let's probably do some, some coding. Uh, yeah. So I uh, try can, to- Can, can you some... maybe uh, bump the, the font size up a couple? Uh, uh, I think probably yeah. for both of us, it looks fine. But I think for some people, it's like a lot easier if it's like bigger. So yeah, like maybe even a little bit it bigger is... if you can, if it doesn't drive you insane. <laughs> it is okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that, okay. that's perfect. Yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah, so very simple application with, which basically almost uh, doing nothing, just <laughs> produce some message. So in, in general, like in Zyocor itself, there is some default logger, like which is doing print line. Uh, there is filter for log levels. I think uh, it's uh, by default, it's logging everything from info level up. So you have some debug messages, like uh, you'll probably not see that. Uh, exactly. Like, uh, and, and so just for everyone here, so these Zio log debug and Zio log info, you can kind of get from the imports above, but these are just in Zio core. So if you, don't do anything with this Zio logging project. You're just using Zio core. These are kind of the 
interfaces you will work with. And essentially, a little, this works a little bit the same way it does with metrics in Zio, where in Zio Core, we try to provide what you could think of as like the front end versus the back end. And so when you do zio.logdebug or log info, you're expressing like an intention of like, I intend to log something at the info level. What actually happens to that, where that goes to, that's kind of a separate concern. So you got like front end and the back end, and then the back end is going to determine where it goes. And Zio Core itself comes with like a very simple back end that basically is just going to print it to the console. But then Zio logging is going to give you all these fancier back ends that are going to integrate with whatever systems you have. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, it's it, it's it's actually like that. So, like, uh, so how how to how to make it better, or how to use like something what's what's in a Zio logging uh, library? Let's say, uh, basically, like uh, like uh, uh, we have like few versions of of loggers. Uh, the best way how to override the logger is do it in Bootstrap. If you want to have everything log uh, logged by this uh, this uh, uh, logger, which you like to have, uh, you can you you can do it. Of course, like uh, like uh, inject it in in, in layer, like if in even in specific services. Uh, like uh, if you want, but then like everything uh, what's like like die message like and so on will be logged by uh, by default logger. Uh, basically, uh, loggers itself are stored in fiber refs like um, this similar like uh, like uh, console and other other those more low level. <laughs> Uh, uh, components in, in Zio 2 uh, before, like uh, it, it was like uh, more like a service in environment. Uh, so uh, basically, uh, basically you can override uh, boots, Bootstrap. Uh, Bootstrap and basically, uh, uh, actually, you can have like multiple loggers like uh, in in uh, in Zio. Uh, so like, if you want to, if you want to remove default logger, like you need to like uh, uh, remove it, and then basically uh, add some like custom logger. Uh, Let's say uh, we can use like console JSON logger from uh, uh, from uh, dialoging. Then yeah, and, when you uh, sorry. And, and one thing here, just for for people, so that this this bootstrap thing that's not a Zio log. That's not a logging specific thing. That's just part of the Zio app default, and that essentially you use to describe any configuration of your overall application. So it could be adding or removing loggers. It could be setting which executor you're using. It could be setting which runtime flags you want to use. But essentially, just building this bootstrap layer the way you want to is the way you customize the runtime of your Zio application. Yeah. Sorry, they're up there. No, no problem. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, in such case, like uh, basically, I will just change like logger, and now you can s maybe I can yeah improve also that one. Uh, you can see that like uh, now it's it's using like uh, JSON format. Uh, uh, so basically, like. Uh, with the uh, latest few version, we added like configuration support, like uh, like it is using again next Zio core feature like Zio config, uh, 
which was introduced, I think, like in start, it's starting to be like 2007, uh, eight, like uh, something like that. Uh, like uh, to add, like uh, to have possibility to use like configuration itself, like uh, which uh, could be in many, many cases easier than write write the code or like especially like this could be very beneficial uh, in relation to deployment and other things where you like to apply, apply like a different uh, configuration for specific environments maybe. So like uh, basically even if you uh, open open implementation like the uh, those like uh, logger is set up from configuration. Of course, like there are default values, but uh, you you are able to change them. Like uh, this, this is like for me, it's probably preferable way. Like uh, you can still write the code if you prefer that, and it's like, uh, but. Uh, I think, uh, like uh, in my opinion, it's probably easier way to do it by configuration. Uh, depends depends on your, of course, it depends on your use case. Uh, and other things like uh, like uh, which are present in Zilog itself, there are like actually we have like two type of log annotations. Like uh, one one are like from uh, Mm, Zyocor itself, but uh, those are like uh, just key values, like string, string values. And uh, we have also log annotations in Zyologin, which supporting like uh, uh, type values, like uh, case classes or objects. Uh, and uh, with that, like uh, you can you can apply like uh, you, you can have like more rich data in, in logging. Uh, so uh, basically, uh, well, what are log annotations good for? So this is like uh, something partially similar to MDC context. Uh, if you know, like. Uh, 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 Java loggers, and as, uh, maybe as well for J and different uh, implementations, and this can be one of way like how to easily like add context to your uh, uh, logs. So uh, let's say do something more more complicated. <laughs> so for example, uh, we can have some um, program. Uh, I don't know, maybe even stream, which like uh, producing some data. So let's say like user actions, let's stream in from uh, range, let's say uh, 10 dot, let's say we have like some user ID, uh, we can do even that one, but we can do also like a uh, dial aspect, annotated user ID. ID. Uh, to sync, because it's sync. Uh, and uh, then let's say we can run the program uh, and let's say we can also like annotate like whole uh, whole uh, action with let's say the action user uh, and this this these actually like uh, is one of way like how to add some context like to, to log itself. Uh, so when I run that, but actually I will have to change one one thing, one more thing, because like uh, 
in uh, default configurations like uh, like in current implementation uh, like uh, uh, annotations are not locked uh, I think we will probably change in, in, in next major or minor version uh, to have it because like it's also one of part which is partially confusing let's say uh, uh, so uh, uh, basically uh, if we look on on a configuration let's let's go there uh, basically default configuration contains like log format and log filter uh, log format is DSL which is like uh, basically it's uh, formatting log, log output. It is something similar to what uh, you can see in, let's say in log bag or like log4j, but you can say, okay, like I want to have in log message some timestamp, date and so on, message, uh, some MTC context and so on, and message supposed to look like that. Uh, this is like uh, something similar to that. Uh, uh, there is like there are values like uh, log uh, uh, log uh, formats like uh, which like adding values to the output uh, and based on that like uh, and on the type of logger like uh, output is produced. Uh, but here, as you can see, like uh, we don't have annotations. So uh, let's let's change it. We can we can, uh, and I will copy it from different parts to not waste time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we can uh, we can basically uh, add uh, configuration. We can add custom configuration. Uh, so. Uh, as I mentioned before, it's like uh, it's using like uh, uh, configuration from Dial itself, like configuration interface. Basically, we have to be able to configure that. We have like also like a string version of that pattern. Uh, basically, under the hood, it is using like a Zio, Zio parser library. Uh, and uh, like uh, you can then then check in documentation like uh, all, all all possible options and so on. Uh, what's possible there? Uh, it's it's similar to log4j uh, and logback partially. Uh, uh, also, like we can we can do like more specific uh, logger configuration. Different level is info. It's similar like uh, in a default blogger implementation, but we, we can have like custom uh, custom uh, configuration for specific paths. Like this is actually, uh, this conceptually is similar like how, how SL4J loggers, like more like logbacks and so on are working uh, uh, basically based on logger names and prefixes, like they, uh, they, uh, uh, resolving specific levels. Um, so to uh, apply like that uh, configuration, we can uh, set configuration provider, uh, which I just set up. And then uh, like, uh, let's see, uh, then, we can just try. So basically, we can, what we can see now. So basically, uh, as I said, like uh, for example, uh, debug log level. So uh, we should see even done message. Uh, actually, done is uh, done is info. So, like debug is start, uh, and uh, also like by formats, like uh, 
basically uh, key values, uh, key values adding uh, all, all annotations to log outputs. So uh, uh, as we can see, like we also should see like user ID and action, action in uh, log messages. Basically action, uh, action is basically inherited uh, by all, everything uh, uh, under, uh, under the given con context. So like everything in user actions in such case. So each, each of these actions uh, execution and logs have like uh, action value and uh, each one has specific was like you can see like specific uh, user ID annotation. So basically with that, you can, uh, you can even like annotate more complex blocks like uh, with one value. This like uh, could be very useful when you have like some tracing ID, for example, and similar things uh, which you like to propagate and then you can easily like correlate or log data or uh, like uh, in a, in a uh, if you are searching for specific related logs uh, uh, in your lo logging logging outputs, so like uh, this is, this could be could be very useful uh, feature like how to correlate logs and like enrich and enrich data. Maybe if you are doing some multi-tenant system or multi-client system like. You can just annotate like specific like uh, code blog, and you sh should have like everything there. Like uh, after that, uh, like you you don't have to solve propagations. You don't have to solve explicit propagation uh, in such case. Uh, if if you don't need that that <laughs> that value like in your business logic, otherwise like you should probably. Uh, propagate it more explicitly, at least in my opinion. So it's up to you. Uh, uh, one, uh, one additional thing which is supported here, like I mentioned that we have like also like uh, the logging log annotations which supporting more rich type. So for example, uh, if we do some case class, let's say user, uh, ID, uh, let's say int, uh, and uh, we we can do like custom uh, custom user log uh, annotation. So uh, new login log annotation. Let's say it's user, user. Uh, we can add user type. Uh, another attributes which are there is like uh, uh, how to combine like current value and next value, and the last one is how to how to render specific value. So. Uh, in such case, like uh, I like to probably have, I think, uh, last, last user. Uh, you can like apply like merging, uh, uh, specific merging if you want, like uh, of multiple values. Uh, and uh, we can do like specific, uh, uh, specific, uh, um, implementation. Uh, actually, like uh, you, uh, uh, you can use like uh, JSON library if you if you want. Like uh, it's it's uh, uh, it's uh, up 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 to you. Uh, but uh, let's say like uh, we will do it like uh, uh, manually. 
uh, in such case because I didn't uh, import it. <laughs> so like uh, this should be like uh, I hope like proper uh, user JSON and uh, like uh, we have feature uh, we have feature in a, in a, like uh, J like uh, JSON logger implementation which try to identify if values are uh, JSON like. And in such case, like uh, we uh, we try, we are propagating them like JSON value in st structure way. So uh, basically, uh, in such case, then uh, I change the code, and uh, basically, uh, instead of uh, uh, user log annotation. Uh, I will do like user ID. Uh, yeah. So uh, uh -huh. basically, when I run that, if I didn't mess something, <laughs> I could do it. Uh, and I probably did it. <laughs> uh, uh, because like it's not like JSON, it's like string. Uh, now I need to figure out. Uh, it should be there like like formatted JSON. So where I did mistake. Yeah, I should do that one also. Uh, so that's that's probably reason why it's not like valid JSON. Yeah, it wasn't valid JSON because of that. <laughs> uh, so like now you can see that it's like uh, it's like JSON structure. So uh, maybe in some next version. We like to figure out how to do like proper structure like uh, logging, but at least for now, uh, even if it's not probably not maybe completely transparent, like uh, uh, you can have something like that, like uh, like uh, in 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 your log outputs. So uh, then. You should be able, like, especially in case of JSON, have some rich structures and like uh, uh, without without some uh, without some problems. Mm -hmm. um, also, like uh, uh, you, yeah, I think in, in, also in such case it is lazy evaluated, which is not case of. Uh, like uh, log like log annotations from uh, Zio uh, core itself, because like those values are uh, like strings. So in, in such case, it is not lazy evaluated. Everything what is set there is automatically uh, evaluated. So uh, in such case, even if you at the end if it's not logged. It is it is unfortunately evaluated. Like uh, that's one of the one of the maybe mistakes or like uh, in Zio Zio core uh, implementations, which hope we will improve in future. Uh, uh, in such case, uh, so uh, maybe some other things. Uh, one one of maybe next uh, features like uh, which we have in in um, uh, loggers are log spans. Uh, those could be useful to maybe see how 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 parts uh, how some part of code uh, like uh, how much uh, time they are take like uh, in different way, like how to compare, like when it started and when it's ended. 
So like uh, in such case, like uh, um, basically when uh, I think I will do like style, maybe I can do it with Zio aspect. I'm sure. Do we have it in? Yeah, we probably do not have aspects of it. Uh, so I'm sorry for so, but look, span. Span. So we have user span. I think I will have to also modify at uh, formats uh, spans. Uh, and maybe to see some different I like to add like some sleep let's say. This. I like to add some sleep and let's check what we can see. Yeah. So basically, like uh, Ziospan is like like let's say start point, like uh, when it's supposed to start to count and then everything was locked uh, under this, this span. Uh, if you have this uh, span in your log message, it's like basically it's time from start till that uh, log. So How far like, are you into the span yeah, you are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. so like, yeah. As I put here, like 100 milliseconds, like you can see that here are around 100 milliseconds gaps, like between between each, each execution. Uh, like uh, so, this this could be also like useful feature. Uh, depends depends on your use case and would like to have, but uh, especially like yeah, it, it is it is working in such way. So start point uh, like an output. Um, basically, uh, let's maybe uh, say like uh, something more about uh, uh, different. Or are there some questions meanwhile? Or like, uh, like uh, we've had a pretty quiet audience, but let me, I think this is a great opportunity. I, I previously, I encourage everyone to think about what they were doing with their logging and what we're kind of covering or not covering. Um, but I think, yeah, this is a great time to kind of go back to everyone. Like if in the discord, like, uh, you know, we, we've got, we've got the guy who's working on the library here. So if there's something that you're doing with your logging that you're like, ah, I don't know how I would do this, or I tried to do this, I ran into problems. Like now is the perfect time to like, say that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, sometimes we have a we have a shy group here. So I think uh, I think we may be in the in the shy stage. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, in similar way, like uh, maybe I will jump just jump to some uh, uh, specific like in, uh, integration or backends which I mentioned like uh, at, uh, at the beginning. Uh, yeah, yeah, blind like, as science. Uh, yeah, basically, like uh, 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 
this is like as of 4 j bridge like which uh, some people's like or some some people are preferred to as i mentioned to use like uh, uh dialoguing implementation and basically they like to uh transfer like as of 4 j outputs to like to to see it in same log format and same way so like uh basically you one way of like what you can do in such case is like use as a for bridge, uh, which you add like as other thing to your bootstrap or, or your layers, like it depends where you are, like to apply that. And then even if you have like standard as a for J logger, like, like that one, uh, basically you should see output. Uh, also, one of the latest features which we added, like uh, I think in, probably in the last version, is that this is able also to propagate like uh, like uh, fibers and log annotation to those logs. So even those logs for SL4J uh, like outputs, if you are using some some like uh, underlying library should be should have like uh, those uh, annotations and, and data uh, in out so and basically uh, if i run the application uh, and uh, like this is like yeah this is direct xy logging but this is sl4j logger itself which is named like as of 4 j logger like uh so we should see it here like those ones output should come from the logger even in such case you should be able to see like uh like uh log annotations uh like trace id and uh, user id which are coming there uh Without issue, so you should be able like correlate also like outputs, log outputs for those specific libraries like which using SL4J uh, loggers itself um, in general. Uh, so uh, like uh, should should <laughs> this should be helpful to solve some of the uh, problems. Uh, what what I maybe like to mention, and it wasn't mentioned at the beginning, is that, uh, of course, you can do own uh, Z logger implementation in, uh, if you like, if you want. Uh, uh, like, uh, just one notice, like, Z logger implementation is not effective. It's not, it's not producing Xyl. So, uh, like, uh, I think that, like, there are some reasons for that, of course. Like, uh, if you want to have fast login, uh, like, fast as possible, it's probably to do, like, uh, minimum. <laughs> the best way is to do minimum at that layer uh, and not call runtime, uh, as I runtime, like, uh, because these uh, have, like, this could have like additional performance impact. Of course, you can do it, do that if you need it from some reason, but then you will have to use like unsafe uh, from Zyre. Uh, like uh, if you have so, such implementation, uh, like it's that maybe you like to uh, push uh, loggers with some uh, client, like maybe you need to do some integration with, uh, I don't know, like. Uh, only implementation with some uh, some logging provider like maybe like Datadog or, and, or like uh, there are similar services and like you don't want to use like log out the parsing depends on your, of course this depends on your infrastructure and other things you you, you can do that but um, in general like uh, Zio Z loggers are not effective so because this this uh, of course will have like performance impacts. Uh, so you need to provide what you are doing at that level. Um, 
that were out. Uh, yeah. So, uh, and yeah, if you are like, if you are using like, uh, like uh, SL4J itself, like you will just add SL4J. In, in such case, like uh, what I like to mention, especially is that uh, uh, there are, uh, we have like two versions of SL4J uh, integration. Like uh, there is SL4J version one and SL4J version two. Uh, there are some differences like uh, for SL4J version one, uh, like, uh, SL4J version one using MDC context, which is basically using thread locals. And in such case, uh, you may have some issues like uh, like uh, with outputs because like uh, like us Zio fibers and uh, threads are not one to one. So uh, this if you have like highly parallel application or high concurrency like you can uh, you can see something incorrect uh, especially in case of logback because i don't know from which reason they have like lazy evaluations of log events and uh, like uh, that's one of the reason when, when you do something like in parallel like you can it can happen that like a uh, thread local is changed before like a uh, log event is processed by underlying log back, let's say. Uh, in case of SL4J version two, we, uh, we, uh, this edits basically key values like uh, to SL4J interface. So in such, such case, we pushing annotations and key value, more like all key values to those key values. So this this part should be uh, more uh, uh, more correct uh, where you have higher highly concurrent uh, applications. Uh, also, like SL4J version two in general requiring like a JDK nine plus. So. Uh, in such case, it's also again like depends like uh, like uh, on uh, your infrastructure, maybe on your company, because like uh, I think there are probably still companies which using JDK eight. <laughs> in such case, you need to use like SL4J version one. Uh, reason for that is like uh, SL4J version two using like. Uh, 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 JDK nine plus uh, injection, uh, so this requires like JDK nine plus uh, to have it work. Also, you should avoid to mix like SL4J with SL4J bridge because like this can produce you problems, and then you can like just guess why my login is not working. And this this I think is one of common mistake because then it's creating some sort of circle like that. Okay, I like to like uh, bridge something from SL4J and then use SL4J to produce output. It's like, yeah, <laughs> you should have it <laughs> to do something like that basically. Uh, be careful with your dependency because like sometimes it's easy like, uh, like yeah. To, uh, to be lost, especially when you are prototyping something. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, so, uh, um, what next? Um, well, well right, first, I, I've, got, I've got to tell you, I, I made my little joke about people being shy, and I, I had several people reach out to me either directly or on the Discord and say, no, we're not shy. We just don't have anything to say because we use the logging and it works so well for us that we don't have anything other than like, yeah, it's working great for us. So, um, I mean, definitely there were other contributors before you, but I know you've put a ton of work into it. And I think it's a, it's a credit to you. And I mean, you've really been on top of it and like 
making sure when you make a change, you update the documents and you push those back to the Zio website. And you know, you've, you've really been, been great about this. So, um, you know, I, I know it can be easy when you're working on something yourself to kind of know all the things that are like not perfect or you're still figuring out, but um, there, there's a lot of good stuff here that's helping a lot of uh, people. So, so definitely uh, kudos to you. Um, Thank you. Uh, uh, and we actually, we, now we do have a question from someone. So uh, this, this is from Nathan. Uh, any obvious major edge cases that you've identified? Normal things we might try to do that are problematic. I know that's somewhat broad, but anything that comes to mind. Like problems, like, like uh, I think, what, like I, I can say what I think we're still missing, like, yeah. in, and and some things like which we are also like work. Uh, I am working on like also with like with you, Adam, like with some guidance. Uh, like definitely, there is there. Are, of course, there are places for improvements. Like uh, I think we we need to find better way how to do structure logging like uh, to have like uh, to not have to do it in such way as i mentioned that okay it is string and we identified like string and then we do it in structure way uh like uh, like yeah that's that's one of thing which was even asked before like how i do structure logging we partially solved the problem with, with this one, like as I mentioned, that okay, even if it's string and like if people like to do JSON logging, we try to identify, okay, this is JSON, so we log it like uh, JSON in structure way and everything is nice. But yeah, maybe in future, it could be nice to have like some support, like uh, better support, maybe use style schema and so on uh, to, format those log outputs and then push it to some stream based on like uh, what people like to use. This could be good for some direct integrations with some maybe even like systems, which processing logs. Uh, that's one of the feature which I think will be good to have in future. Um, next, Next feature which uh, I'm currently trying to add is to have like uh, rec to have possibility to reconfigure logger uh, at runtime. So if you have running application and you like uh, you need to change log level without the restart, like uh, we I think this is like feature which I at least I like to have, uh, yeah. uh, like uh, which could be very helpful, like in some even in some production environments or even in some development environments. Because like in general, like if your application like producing a lot of logs, you don't like want to have like big noise around. But like when something is happening and something is problematic, it's like it could be like. It, it is very helpful when to, uh, like to, okay, I like to change like uh, my log level for something to debug and now I can see like what's happening, like without the restart, of course. Because even even the restart of your application can, uh, can uh, like, uh, you can lose like some state of your application, which like then uh, you can have a problem to reproduce state, but like to, like uh, have it, have it, like have such feature to change it in runtime. I think this this is this could like help a lot a lot uh, when you are trying to solve some problem. So like I hope that in following weeks we will add support for for that feature. Uh, this feature will be probably like uh, will require to. Uh, like uh, uh, custom uh, enable or like custom installation because like of course when you want to do something like uh, uh, reconfigurable it will have some price uh, to do that uh, but uh, like uh, yeah for a lot of people like uh, even for that price like uh, it could be very beneficial um, to have it uh, 
So I think like those, those are main main things like uh, which will be good to have. Uh, in relation to other things, uh, I'm not sure like uh, uh, what could be like good next or like very useful integration or very useful backends to have. Like, as I mentioned, like uh, in relation to Java world itself, like most most of libraries using SL4J. So like those two types, like uh, solving that uh, in most cases. Uh, we have also like a Java platform logger implementation, but I think that probably nobody using that, at least uh, based on my knowledge. Uh, uh, like, uh, so it is there, but uh, not, not sure if somebody would think that. Um, and yeah, of course, like improve API itself, like better, better, like uh, better layers definition. Probably improve default setup, as I mentioned. Probably have more rich default log format. Do not require to, from user just always to change that. So yeah, um, I think like yeah. those those parts are probably main. Probably with that we will do next uh, minor release for. Uh, uh, like uh, so we can do also some uh, cleanup but like uh, like uh, I think in general like uh, it will it will probably not be binary compatible but uh, like uh, like uh, probably not a lot of uh, things uh, we will probably not change a lot of things so it should not be like that you have, will have to rewrite like your application probably it will just flyer injection yeah. will change. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then we're just out of time. We did get one other question that maybe I can hit on. Um, there was a question about like, how does, so there, we talked about fiber refs, the idea that loggers in a fiber ref and like, what does that mean? And what, how does that work with concurrency? And basically the idea is, yeah, the, the logger is stored in this fiber ref, but what that means is that each fiber gets their own copy of the logger, kind of reference the logger. Uh, and the advantage of that is that uh, if you make a change to the logger for one scope, for one fiber and its children, then it only impacts that scope that you make the change in. So I, I think that's come up less in these examples here because largely we've just been adding the loggers at the very top of our application. And so we just have a consistent set of loggers for the whole application, which is probably the normal thing you wanna do. But what it does mean is that if you wanted to, if you kind of had like two big pieces of your application and for some reason this needs to get logged one way and this needs to get logged the other way, when you set the logger for this piece of your application, it's not gonna mess with the logging for the other part of the application. So it's very modular in that way. Um, Peter, is there anything else you'd want to say about that? Yeah, I, I think you say you said it exactly <laughs> how, how it is. <laughs> like uh, maybe one one more, uh, not in relation to that um, that that question, but uh, like we have also like something like metric logger. So if you like to have some basic metric about like uh, okay, like so many warns, so many errors, and so on, like there is something which is called metric logger and this is just additional logger which is injected to, to uh, which you can inject to your application and like then uh, it is using like xyometrics so like uh, uh, if you need some something like that you can have it everything goes together yeah all right Cool, well, I think we're about at time. Let me just do a quick check-in here. Okay, uh, someone was just saying, yeah, we answered that question. So I think we've hit on everything. So uh, first, just big thank you for uh, to, to Peter for uh, both joining us today and for his ongoing work. And then, uh, yeah, would encourage everyone, uh, there's that Zio Meetups channel on the Discord. 
that's a great place if you have uh, follow-ups on this discussion, as well as on the Zio Discord, there's a Zio logging channel that uh, I, I know Peter is manning on a regular basis. So uh, if you have problems or thoughts or ideas or any of that, uh, you know where to find us. Uh, but with that, I uh, hope everyone has a great uh, weekend. I know it's like at least in most of uh, you know, summer and warm weather and fun things to do. So hopefully uh, everyone has some uh, fun stuff planned for the, uh, the weekend. Take care, everyone. Thank you very much to everybody to join and see you next time. Yeah, bye.